Okay, so anyway, we're going to um, begin the class by going over the uh, test that was just given. This was the first problem. It was uh, 5x minus 15 divided by 3 minus x. And the idea here was to factor the numerator. And of course, it came out to 3 minus, you know, to x minus 3. And when you, uh, let me just make this a little brighter, if I might. A little brighter here. OK, all right. This whole part right here was equal to negative 1. So this is five times negative one, which was negative five. Uh, very few people got that wrong, obviously. Problem number two. Problem number two was, uh, you know, a problem we've, we've done in class similar to this. But uh, the idea behind this problem was to factor everything. It's a division problem, and of course, the first step in doing this problem is to take the second fraction and invert it. Most people did that correctly, but let me be, let, let, let me start factoring as I go along. So let me just do this one first, and we you know this one comes next, and then we multiply, and I mean this is basically what you had to do. You don't have to factor everything. This was not only a problem where you have to uh, divide two fractions, but it was a, it was a test of your ability to factor. That's obviously what's going on in this problem, because that's really what you're doing. So let's take the numerator, 2x and x, and we want a, a negative 3 uh, over here on the you know for the product and a negative five when you add. So this is the way it would look. It would look like three and one and then negative and positive. And what this would do would give you a negative six x and a positive one x would be a negative five x. And then of course positive one times negative three is three. Okay. And then here you get two x and x. And we want, and this is a very similar problem, my goodness. Very similar problem. Uh, with, I'm, I'm, try, I'm looking at this at the same time. Five and one. And again, this is a 10, but you want that to be a nine. So this has to be a negative and a positive. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And now remember, we're, we're switching this around. So the x squared minus 9 is in the denominator, and you get x minus 3 and x plus 3, and then the numerator, x minus 5, x plus 4. <clears throat> and uh, basically, this all drops out. And that's why the answer to this problem, if I remember correctly, everybody pretty much had this although some people had some pretty unorthodox way of doing it. But this was the answer to the question. Problem three, three x squared minus eight y squared divided by x. I don't want to be in the problem so far along. x squared minus two xy and then minus 3xy minus x squared divided by xy minus 2y squared. This was a problem. And the first step, of course, is to factor. Factor here and factor here. So that's my first step. 3x squared minus 8y squared. Excuse me for one minute. I have my phone on and I want to uh, silence it so it doesn't disturb us.
and x times x minus uh, y. And then minus 3xy minus x squared. And then here, you take out the y, and you have x minus 2y. So you can see that this is the same as that. Is that it? Oh, so there was no actual uh, switching around the signs in this problem. This was just a question of finding the least common denominator. Okay, so we're going to now create a common denominator. Okay, so it's got to have an X. So this has an X. This has an X. It's got to have a Y. So this has a Y and this has a Y. And it has to have x minus 2y. So this has x minus 2y and x minus 2y. So to get from here to here, to get from here to here, you can see that we're missing, we're missing the y. So to get from this denominator, the old denominator, to the least common denominator, we have to multiply everything by y. So this gets multiplied by, by y. All right, so this is going to be, you know, like y over y. That's what's going on here. When we multiply the numerator and denominator by y over y, we wind up with uh, the common denominator. And here, to get from this denominator, the old denominator, to the new denominator, we need to multiply by x. So this is x times all of this. And then y, everything gets multiplied by x there. So this is x times 3xy <coughs> minus x squared. And then you draw a line. And then I'm, mul I'm multiplying y times 3x squared and get 3x squared y minus 8y to the third. And then we, we can keep going because everything's going to be over the same denominator. And here it's going to be negative 3x squared y. And here it's going to be negative or positive x to the third. Okay, that negative times that negative gives that positive. And everything will be over xy times x minus 2y. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was, I was looking at this and thinking. Now, uh, this drops out with this because they're, they're the same common terms. Like terms drop out, these drop out. And then you wind up with putting this in front and putting that next you get x to the third minus x uh, 8y a y cubed divided by xy times x minus 2y. Now, many people left the problem like this, but there were several people who realized that this is a difference of two perfect cubes, and that could be factored into x minus 2y times x squared plus uh, 2xy plus y to the second. I'm sure I got that right. Yes, I do. Oh, I forgot the four. Okay, so it's really, you know, this is really uh, x to the third minus 2y to the third. Okay, so... Uh, this is not only x to the y to the second, but it's 4y to the second, because it's 2xy times 2xy. Okay, and then this is xy times x minus 2y. Okay, so this cancels out with this, and the answer to the question is x squared plus 2xy plus 4y squared over xy. This is, the end, this is the end of the problem.
Okay, here's problem number four, going back up to the top. And problem number four is two plus three X over four X minus one divided by one minus 12 over four X minus one. So again, what you wanna to try to do in this case, you're looking for the least common multiple, not the least common denominator, because we're not gonna be combining these two fractions, but you wanna get rid of these two denominators. So you're gonna multiply everything by four X minus one. Four X minus one and four X minus one. Okay, and what that will do is it'll give us two times four X minus one is eight X minus two plus three X. Is that what you got? Yeah, I guess so, right. I, I, I had it in two steps, but it winds up ultimately as eight X minus two plus three X. That's the numerator, the denominator is four X minus one times one is four X minus one. And then this cancels out. So this cancels out with that. That's why we wind up with three X. This cancels out with that. That's why you wind up with negative 12. And this is what you get. And all you have to do here is simplify it. And because eight X plus three X is 11 X minus two divided by four X minus 13. Okay. Problem number five. Four over Y minus two minus two over Y equals three minus Y divided by Y, it's Y squared minus two Y. But I'm gonna factor this immediately. Well, let, me, let me write it and then I'll erase it and factor it. I'm trying to you know, conserve space here. So in other words, this, this is the only thing that needs to be factored. And it's factored into y times y minus two, which is perfect because it matches the y minus two over here. So we could take this away because it's just been factored into y times y minus two. That's what that becomes. And, you know, in this type of problem, we want to get rid of the denominators. Therefore, we multiply by the least common multiple, which will be y times y minus two. So each term gets multiplied by y times y minus two. And this drops out with that, you get four y. This drops out with that, you get negative two times y minus two, and both of these drop out and you get three minus y. And that's what you wind up with. You wind up with a rather easy linear equation. So four y minus two y plus four equals three minus y. So I'm, I'm just gonna combine like terms first. So this becomes two Y plus four equals three minus Y. And uh, I wanna get the, the, the Y's on one side. It's not a quadratic. So we're not gonna try to get, you know, stuff on, on the left and, and zero on the right. We're just simply going to bring over this Y and bring over this four. And that will leave us with no y's over there, but a negative one here, this drops out and three y equals negative one. And of course, y is equal to negative one third. And now you're given this function. And you are told to state the parent function, the domain, the range, the vertical, the horizontal asymptotes, and then 
you're asked to uh, sketch the graph. So the parent function for this type of, of function would be f of x equals one over x. Now I say, I said, I didn't say sketch the parent function, but when you stated the parent function, I assumed that you would, you know, do this. At least, you know, to show what that would be. Some people showed the parent function as being this and this, which was okay because that was, you know, what happens with the negative. The negative would cause this. Excuse me. The negative would cause, instead of the graphs being in the first and third quadrants, in the second and fourth quadrants. Okay, but now let's do all this other stuff. So this, is the, this takes care of the parent function. And the uh, horizontal asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, HA, would be um, Y equals two, the vertical asymptote would be X equals three. So now you would go down here and sketch this. So a lot of people didn't quite know how to sketch it. You know, they, they, had, they had this. The vertical asymptote would be X equals three. The horizontal would be Y equals two. But a lot of people at this point didn't quite know what to do, so they just graphed the function. But once you graph the x equals 3 and the y equals 2, then you can forget about the old x and y axes, and you could just simply put the function where it belongs, which is in here. And remember that it's in there because of the negative. The negative gives us the reflection of what the parent function would have looked like, what it would look like, okay? And of course, the domain would be from negative infinity, so negative infinity to infinity. So negative infinity, it would stop at the vertical asymptote and then pick up again on the, on the other end of that, which would be the three and, and the infinity. And then the range, and the difference between domain and range is that domain is uh, horizontal, you know, going from, from left to right, and the range would, would be the values along the, the y-axis or the new y-axis, which would be, um, you know, going up here to uh, y equals 2. So that would be negative infinity to 2 and then from two to infinity. And this was the entire problem. Uh, problem number seven was a partial fraction decomposition. And these, all, these are all done the same way. And this, this is on the final exam. This is on the final exam. So the first thing you do is to factor the denominator. <clears throat> And then to indicate what the two partial fractions will be using A and B as we usually do. So if you start with that and then you go down here and you have this. And the goal will be to find out what A and B are equal to. Some people did this problem a different way from the way that I had been doing it in class. And, you know, I could only imagine, I could only hope that what they were doing was copying from somebody else's video, or maybe they had taken pre-calculus and were more used to that method. I didn't care how you got the answer. As I said, I, didn't, I don't care how you do a problem, as long as it makes sense 
going from step to step until you get to the answer. If you know, if if, if it was a if it was a mess, some people just had like a total incomprehensible mess that I couldn't figure out. And um, you know, I took points off for that. And I spoke to uh, the coordinator of the uh, 206.5, and she's, you know, agreed with me. Yes, it has to, it has to make sense. And then there's an answer. You don't just put an answer up there. All right. So at this point, we had, we have to get rid of the denominators, which we do by multiplying by this denominator. So x plus four times x minus three and x minus three times x plus four. Doesn't matter how you put that. This drops out with, with this stuff in the denominator and you're left with negative four x minus 37. This drops out with that giving you a times x plus four. This drops out with that, giving you B times X minus three. And what you want to do now is get this to drop out and solve for B and get this to drop out and solve for A. So I'm going to let X equal negative four to begin with. So negative four times negative four minus 37 is equal to a times negative four plus four. So this is the one that will drop out and we'll wind up with B times negative four minus three. And this becomes 16 minus 37, negative 21 equals negative seven B. And then divide by negative seven, and B is equal to three. And that took care of that. Then we want to, of course, solve for A. So we have to get rid of the B and we let X equal three. So X, when X is equal to three, we get negative four times three minus 37 is equal to a times three plus four plus b times three minus three. So once again, the b's drop out because that, that becomes zero. And then this makes it negative 12 minus 37 is negative 49 equals seven a divide by seven and a is equal to negative seven. And a number, you know, people did this in a variety of ways. I'll show you some of the, the ways. At this point, this is the way people, most people did the problem. Some people did a prob the problem a little differently. And okay, I, I understood that. And it made sense to me. So, you know, I let it go. But this was, so this winds up negative four X minus 37 divided by x squared plus x minus 12, and that will be equal to, now some people just wrote it as negative seven over x minus three plus three over x plus four. And that's fine. I gave full credit for that, obviously. But other people, you know, realize the peculiarity of this negative seven being over there. And it's not, you know, it's not a terrible thing, but they wrote it as putting the three X plus four first, and then making this negative seven times X minus three. This is the way I would have written it. This is the more, you know, professional mathematical way of doing, you know, that problem by making it look like this rather than like that. But it, it doesn't really matter. And you know, e either one receive full credit. And as I said, that one, you know, a problem of that nature is usually on the final exam. Okay, so this problem, I don't believe many people got wrong because it was considered 
kind of a pretty straightforward problem. Nine points total. And you're given these two functions. And the first question, so there are three questions that are being asked. One is to find the domain of f of x. So the problem with this with problem with this function is what happens when the denominator is zero. So we want x plus six to not equal zero. And therefore, x is equal to negative, not equal to negative six. So this is the only spot where this function is not defined. Now, some people just left it like this. I gave that full credit, even though I expected people to use interval notation. Get used to this, because when you get to um, calculus, as many people are taking calculus, they'll, they, they won't accept that. This is the, the answer they'll expect, interval notation. Okay, this is the way, you know, you're supposed to be doing it. All right, then you were asked to find f of g of x, which meant that uh, you were finding f of g of x. So if f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 6 and g of x, was 2x plus 3, wherever you see a 2x, wherever you see an x, you substitute the 2x plus 3. So instead of x over here, you'd have 2x plus 3 plus 6, and simplify that and get 1 over 2x plus 9. And that was, you know, that was the answer to that part of the problem. So this was equal to f of g of x. This was, this was question B. So this is question A. And that over here was question B. Now, the final part was to find the domain of f of g of x. So you would let 2x plus 9 not equal 0. That's the domain. So negative 9, negative 9, 2x cannot equal negative 9, divide by 2, let me get rid of this, and x is not equal to negative 4 and a half, or 9 over 2, I accepted that as well. But honestly, it was the interval notation that I was looking for, but I didn't, I didn't, you know, get too upset about that because if people got this, if people got this and they even gave me a diagram sometimes, then that's fine. But as I said, you know, in higher mathematics, that's the acceptable way of doing it. So that was problem number eight. Problem number nine, which wants us to find the inverse of this function. Okay, so that's the function. So there's two parts of this problem. One is to simply find the inverse, and the other part is to verify. So you're supposed to do the you know, finding of the inverse and then the verification. So we let y equal f of x. And then I like to switch things around because we're now going to be solving for x. Oh, excuse me, I left out a step. <laughs> of course I left out a step. You know, you're not solving for x. You switch the x to the y. So x is equal to the square root of 3y plus 1. Very important step, obviously, is to switch the x with the y. Okay, now I'm switching it around. I realized I was doing it incorrectly when I was... Uh, you know, when I did that switching around. And now you want to square both sides of the equation. And you get 3y plus 1 is equal to x squared. And you want to get rid of the 1. 
and then divide by three. And this turns out to equal the inverse, excuse me, divided by three. Okay, and I would like to replace the y here by the, the nomenclature for the inverse, which is f negative one, f negative one of x. So this was the inverse. This is, you know, half the, half the problem was this. I think it was a 10 point question. 10 point question. And this, you know, this is, this was uh, five points to find that. And then you have to do the verification, which is to show that f of g of x was equal to x and that uh, g of f of x was also uh, equal to I'm x. thinking it's g. Well, I'm just, this is a, this is a generalization. This is a oh, general you, can, you can call anything g? Yeah, I'm, I'm just calling, mm. I'm, I'm just generalizing. You know, I'm just saying that if you have two functions, that, that both of them have to, I mean, you want me to do this. You want me to do uh, f of uh, of the inverse, inverse, yeah, right, is equal to the inverse of, oh, I should just put a zero, of f is equal to x. So, mm. uh, so f of f of the inverse will be equal to, so here's the original function. All right, so f of, f of x is equal to the square root of three x plus one, but instead of x, we're going to substitute the inverse, which was x squared, the square root of x squared minus one over three plus one. Okay, so this is uh, f of the inverse of x. And let's see what that comes out to. Well, um, well, what am I doing? Oh, oh, this is, so I'm doing the original function and, and I left out the three. So you see the three, I left out the three. So there's really a three in front of this, which is a very important three. That three was, I, I left out. So the three is brought down there. And now you cancel out the threes and get the square root of x squared minus one plus one. The ones drop out and the square root of x squared will be equal to x. So the function of the inverse is equal to x. And now you're going to find the inverse of the function. Okay, and you start, in this case, you're starting with the inverse, which is x squared minus one over three. But instead of x, you're substituting the original function, which is f of the square root of three x plus one. See, I left that, I left that out over here, I think. Oh, no, I... Well, yeah, I didn't put the, uh, I didn't put this in there. In here should obviously be the inverse, which was x squared minus one over three. And that's what that, that became. Okay, so here we're taking the square root of three x plus one, the original function, squaring it minus one over three. That's what we're doing. See, see, wherever you, whatever, wherever you see an x, you would substitute the three x plus one. So here you get three x plus one minus one over three equals. Now the ones drop out, the threes drop out, and you get the x that you're looking for. So in this case, the inverse of the function is equal to x. Again, many people left it like this and said, okay, it works. And, you know, some people even did this. I would like to have seen f of the inverse 
is equal to the inverse of f of x equals x, but you know, some people didn't have that, and I didn't go too crazy about that. I wasn't going to take points off the list. Problem, problem 10 and 11, very few people got wrong. So that was like a gift of six points. You're given an exponential function, and you're asked to change it to a logarithmic function. So the log and the base is, two, is 10 of 1 over 10,000 is equal to negative 4. You know, I didn't ask you why this is true. I didn't ask you. All I wanted was to go from here to here. And that was question 10. And then in question 11, it was the opposite. I gave you the expression in logarithmic form and asked you to express that in exponential form, which is the base to the exponent is equal to the number. That was it. And that was, you know, three points each. Okay, problem number 12 is 81 to the 3x minus 2 is equal to 27 to the 2x plus 1. And what I wanted you to do there is to change both of these numbers to the same base. So 81 can be expressed as 3 to the 4th. 27 can be expressed as 3 to the 3rd. Once the bases are the same, the purpose of doing this, going from here to here, is to get the bases to be the same. So once the bases are the same, you can set the exponents equal to each other. Wait, isn't it 2x plus 7? <laughs> is it? Yes, it is. Hmm. Thank you. Hmm. Yes. Sorry about that. Yeah, well, I would have gotten the wrong answer, huh? 12x minus 8 equals 6x plus 21. This is what you get for being in a hurry. I'm giving you a perfect demonstration of what happens when you're in a hurry. And, you know, as I said, I told you the reason for that, but I shouldn't be in a hurry. You can't do math like that and be successful. 6x minus 8 is 21 plus 28 plus 28. 6x equals 29, and x is equal to 29 over 6. And that was a, a pretty successful problem. Let me take a drink or something here. Really. Wow, there are 15 people here today. You think we were going over the test or something? Okay, problem number 13. Uh, solve for x. So 5 plus 4 to the x minus 2 equals 18. Okay, well, uh, let me rewrite it. Okay, so negative 5, negative 5, 4 to the x minus 2 equals 13. And the way you do this is by using the change of base concept. In other words, x minus 2 will be equal to the log of 13 divided by the log of 4. And I would like, you know, I, this is the way I did it. You didn't have to do it this way. A lot of people did this first and then brought the 2 over, which is fine. You can do it that way also. And I like to put the 2 in front. But it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. I don't have my uh, calculator handy, so I'm just going to give you the answer here. Uh, so I guess it came out. I guess this came out 
1.9, and this is equal to 2, and x was equal to 3.9. I think it was um, 3.85, right? Wasn't it really? I got 1.85, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of people rounded it off. But the answer that when, when I had done it, I got this, you know, and I got, I had an answer of three point. I think I thought we agreed that we were going to be doing it to the nearest hundredth. So, uh, you know, that that was the answer I was looking for. But I did not take any points off of this because this obviously meant since the problem did not say, you know, find the answer to the nearest uh, tenth that, you know, it, it, it didn't say anything. It didn't say to the nearest hundredth or whatever. It just said solve for X, I believe, right? Yeah. So, you know, I can't take points off if I don't indicate what I really want there. So I accepted either answer. Nobody put down four. I mean, nobody rounded it off even more. That's Those were the two answers. And here's problem 14, which is to use the properties of logs. Class did very well on this problem, if I remember correctly. A to the fifth, uh, B to the second, divided by C. Okay, so my, my way of, of showing the class this problem was to tell them to first change this to A to the fifth, B to the second, over C, to the one half. I remember this on the final exam. One half, and then everything goes in here, and then five times the log of A plus two times the log of B plus, excuse me, minus. If we're dividing, if you're dividing numbers, then you're subtracting the uh, logarithms. This was the answer. But a lot of people did this problem by using the distributive property and just making this. So this was the alternate answer that I, of course, accepted because it was a right answer. 5 over 5 log A. See, I wouldn't have done this because, you know, you, you're opening up the door to making other mistakes. So I didn't really expect this, but one half of two is one. So that's just the log of B and then minus one half the log of C. And you don't need the brackets at this point because you've already used the half. So I accepted either answer. I wanted to ask, um... When something is to the exponent, then it's that number multiplied log, and then yes. Uh, so why does the log drop out the one that's outside of the parentheses? Why is it not half log and then the rest? Well, I guess it could have been. I guess you could have taken this half and put it over there. You sure? And keep the log. Okay. Yeah, and then, and then do the log, and then do the expansion. Hmm. In other words, this could have been one half the log of a to the fifth, b to the second, hmm. c, right? And then you would do all the things. In other words, that's what this would have been. So that, that's basically what I did here. I moved the, the one half to the front, and there it is. And then I did the log. You know, five times the log of A, two times the log of B, and minus the log. Mm. See, that's how I did the problem. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay, last problem. I'm going to just erase this part here so I don't have to erase it twice. Okay. All righty. So problem number 15. This was not an easy test. The log to the base 2 of x plus log to the base 2 
of x plus 6 equals 4. Okay, so this is this is a, a log expansion. So this is like we're looking at this in the bottom here. And then if this will be if I said to you, take this and compress it to look like that. To, you know, to get this to look like that, that's what I'm asking you here. That's how this problem is to be done. So this is really the log to the base two of x times x plus six is equal to four. So I'm, you know, I'm saying, well, this came from the fact that I was doing the problem like this. So this is x times x plus six equals two to the fourth. The base to the exponent, that's this part right here, is equal to the number. And the number was everything over here. So you could even put brackets around this to show that that's the case. And then, you know, you just work it out algebraically. Uh, two to the fourth was 16, x squared plus six x. Some people didn't know what factors to use that multiply to give you 16 and add it up to give you a uh, positive six. And that, this is what it was, equals zero, and therefore x equals two and x equals negative eight. And then of course, this is the part where you had to <laughs> indicate that the negative eight is the extraneous solution because you can't have the law of a negative number. So I, I wanted at least to, you know, as I've said before many times, this is the extraneous solution. I didn't even want an explanation. I just wanted to, you know, but a lot of people just didn't bother and they just wrote down x equals two. But I understand.